Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. We have negative 1 to the power z equals i and we are going to solve for z. Okay, makes sense? So in the real world this is not going to happen, right? Because if you raise negative 1 to any power you're either going to get positive 1 or negative 1, of course, if that power is an integer, positive or negative, right? But if z is not an integer and you're trying to find a solution in the real world, that's going to be crazy. Because think about negative 1 to the power 3 over 5. Well, actually, we can find it. Anyways, I don't know. 3 halves, maybe. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve these kinds of equations. So to be able to solve this equation, can I just use logs, for example, ln both sides, natural log, right? And then z will come to the front. We're going to get z ln negative 1 equals ln i. And then z is going to equal ln i over ln negative 1. Great. But not so great because what is ln i? What is ln negative 1? How do you define them? Is there a single value? Do they have single values or are they multi-valued? A lot of good questions, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can get to the bottom of this by using exponentiation, okay? Or maybe the exponential. So let's go ahead and write each of these in polar form. In other words, thanks to Euler, we can go ahead and convert these. So negative 1 on the complex plane or the argand plane, right? It's going to look like this. It's going to be on the real axis because it is a real number and its distance from 0 is going to be 1 unit, its absolute value, in other words. And this is where negative 1 appears. And if you consider that a vector or whatever, something like that, it's going to make an angle, right? And you can kind of give it a direction too. And now it's going to be 180 degrees or pi radians. Cool. Because pi is going to be the argument of this number, which we can use theta, which we can call theta. And 1, the distance from 0, is going to be the absolute value or the modulus. And you can write any complex number as r times e to the i theta, where theta is the argument and r is the modulus. Okay? So, negative 1 can be written as... What is the, we don't need parentheses, by the way. Negative 1 can be written as 1 times e to the power i pi, right? But you don't really need to write the 1, so there's a better way to do it. Let's just write e to the power i pi, but not just pi, because you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. So I'm just going to add 2 pi n, where n is an integer, okay? And can be positive or negative because you can basically make rotations. If I start here and add 2 pi to this angle, it's going to bring me to the same point. Make sense? Cool, cool. We got care, uh, we've taken care of negative 1. Now let's take care of i. Same manner, in, similarly, it's going to be here. i is going to be here on the imaginary axis, of course. And then it's going to make a pi over 2 radians. So, i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2, but we still have to use the 2 pi k, right? Or should we, or do we have to use it, right? That's going to be a good question. Now, when we write an equation like negative 1 to the power z equals i, do we really need to consider adding multiples of 2 pi? This is actually has been a really interesting question, and this has caused a lot of debate. Some people say you don't need it. Some people say you do. Let's go ahead and explore and see what happens at the end. Okay? So now we can just go ahead and plug in everything. Uh, negative 1, uh, I'm going to write it as e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n. So initially, I'm going to go ahead and use my integer. By the way, k is an integer too. I forgot to say that, I believe. And now we're going to raise this to the power z. And it's going to equal i which I wrote as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. I didn't want to use the same integers because they don't have to be the same. They could be different. Make sense? Now, this is pretty good because 
I got the exponentials on both sides and now we can simplify this. Let's go ahead and uh, multiply by z, e to the iz times pi plus 2 pi n equals e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And then k are integers again and now we can cancel out the i because it's not zero and we can even cancel out more but let's get to that later. Now natural log both sides and you're going to get the following. z times pi plus 2 pi n equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Great. Now we can go ahead and divide both sides by pi which is nice because that's going to give us z times 1 plus 2 n and on the right hand side we're going to get 1 half plus 2 k. It's kind of like a half integer maybe? Uh, half more than an even integer. Something like that. Anyways. And now we have an odd integer on the left hand side. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator. Write this as 4k plus 1 divided by 2. And then let's go ahead and divide both sides by 1 plus 2n or 2n plus 1. It's going to look like this at the end. We're going to multiply that by 2. It's going to be 4n plus 2. So we kind of get an interesting result. Would you expect uh, something like this? Because this is k and n are integers and there is no i in the solution. And z is a complex number, obviously, but it's just made up of integers. So it's at the same time a real number. Isn't that interesting? Like you take a negative number, raise it to a power, and you get i, and the power is real. Okay? How is that possible? Let's go ahead and explore. We can kind of look at some um, special values, such as replace k with 1 and n with 1. Okay? That's going to be interesting. So from here, we're going to get z equals 5 divided by 6, right? It's 5 over 6. Now let's go ahead and plug this in. We get negative 1 to the power 5 over 6 equals i. Is that correct? Who knows? Maybe to find out, could we raise both sides to the 6th power? Sure, why not? Because this would basically mean you take negative 1 and then find uh, the 6th root of negative 1. And there are six six roots, by the way. you got to be careful in the complex world. Things are crazy. And then raise it to the fifth power and hoping to get i from there. But what are the six roots of negative one? Hmm, there are quite a few, so you can test them out, right? Or let's use another value. What happens if k is zero and n is zero at the same time, right? That's going to give us actually something interesting because z is going to be now, ready, drum roll, one half, ta-da. And now we're kind of getting something super simple. Negative one to the power one half is i. Is that correct? And the answer is yes. Because remember how we defined i at the very beginning, right? i squared is negative one. So i is actually one of the roots of negative one. The other one is negative i. And in this case, we get a solution. But the problem is what happens if you don't use n what are you going to end up with? And is that going to work? Um, you can go ahead and explore it. So basically, just get rid of uh, the n value. Don't add 2 pi n because that's the exponent for negative 1. And just go with z. And that's going to give you 4k plus 1 divided by 2. Make sense? In other words, take n equals 0. So if z is equal to 4k plus 1 divided by 2, does this give us all the solutions? Or would you expect except this one as a solution, okay? In my opinion, we do need the n, but again, this is multi-valued, so that could be a little problematic. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.